Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Siege School. If you watched the last episode, you probably think that this one's going to be about Defender Gadgets like I said it would be, but it is not. Instead, we're going to be talking about the pick and ban system, and I'm going to be teaching you guys how to use it effectively in your advantage. And also be going over what operators are good bans on what maps, why you shouldn't choose no ban, and also different methods of banning. Now, if you're wondering why this episode isn't about Defender Gadgets, this is because the new deployable shield is supposed to be coming out probably next season, so I don't want to make an episode about Defender Gadgets and have it be immediately obsolete in the next season. So instead, I'm going to wait for that deployable shield change to go live, and then I'll cover it. But for now, we'll talk about pick and ban. Now, before we get into who you should ban and the theory behind all of it, let's actually talk about the core structure of pick and ban. This is mainly for the new players, so if you've played ranked a bunch and already know about pick and ban, you can just skip to the next segment. So pick and ban. This was just introduced in Phantom Sight, so it's only been live for about a little over a month now. The way it works is that every single game before the game actually starts, each team chooses two operators to ban. One attacker, one defender. Defense will always go first and choose the first attacker. After that, the attacking side chooses an attacker and then a defender. After they've chosen, then a defending side gets to choose again, but this time a defender. These four operators will be banned for the rest of the match and cannot be chosen by anybody in the entire game. So you're not banning operators just for the enemy team not to play, you're also banning operators for your team not to play. I know a few people were confused about whether they could play the attackers that they've banned, so I just want to clarify that for anyone who's new. And with this pick and ban structure, we also got introduced with three round rotation, which I made a rant video on why that's not such a huge deal, but I won't get into the rant portion of it today. Basically, if you're defense first, you're going to play defense for three rounds in a row, and then it's going to swap sides. And then you'll attack for three rounds in a row. When it gets to overtime, it just goes back and forth once each. Also, it's important to note, at least as of making this video, there is no current method in place for not allowing bans on specific operators. Just to clarify, what I'm saying is, every single time a new season comes out and there's new operators, the enemy team or your team even can ban the new operators so that no one can play them. Which has caused a lot of grief in the community because people want to play the new operators in ranked, but since they're getting banned all the time, at least at the beginning of the season, they don't get an opportunity to play them. So this is something that could change in the future, but as of the recording of this video, there's nothing like that in place. And one more thing that I should add for a structure that would be kind of confusing if you watch Pro League, there is no 6th pick. A lot of people were kind of hoping for that because it can add another element to how you ban and how you pick operators, but there is no 6th pick as of yet. And to clarify for people who don't watch Pro League, the way 6th pick works is essentially both teams choose their operators, and then it reveals all of the operators chosen in this round. Then one person on each team can swap their operator without the enemy team knowing. So it basically reveals all operators and allows teams to try to formulate a plan, but you don't know if every single one of those operators will be in that round, because one of them could be swapped out. But as it stands, that is not in the game, and I don't think they have any plans on bringing it to ranked. It really is only a format that works when you're in a five-man stack. If you are a bunch of solo queues, people can really abuse it because only one person can six pick, so you could easily have someone on your team choose Thermite, say they're going to be the hard breacher, and then six pick off of them and go someone useless. So it's probably a good idea that's not ranked. But anyways, that is a structure of pick and ban. Hopefully I explained it well for you guys. Now we're going to go on to some actual topics of conversation. The first topic is going to be the popular bans. I'm going to go over the three most popular bans on attack and defense and explain why they are the most popular bans. Now keep in mind, for this segment, I went over the operators that I personally see banned the most. This is primarily data taken from my main account and not necessarily my Copper to Diamond account because bans change based on what rank you're in. But anyways, personally, the three most popular bans that I've seen for attack on my main account in Platinum are Jackal, Monty and Blackbeard. I will say Blackbeard is the tentative one. It could also be considered Blitz, but I swear I see Blackbeard way more than Blitz. And the three most popular defender bands, which honestly there's no question about it, are Legion, Mira, and Echo. Now let's discuss why these six operators are the most banned. We'll start off with Jackal, who I think almost everyone can unanimously agree is the most needed ban on any map. Now why is that? Jackal is oppressive. He completely prevents roaming. He can track a defender for a total of one minute and usually ends up killing the roamer before they can even track them a second time. And the way his scan works has actually recently been changed. Before it used to ping someone for a total of five times over 20 seconds, it now instead pings them four times over 16 seconds. So they just removed one ping. 
and that is to combat his high ban rate. But anyways, he can track people for so long and basically just completely prevents anyone on the defending side from leaving sight. If you leave the objective, he will find you. And any coordinated team can easily pincer you if you're being tracked. Very, very rarely does it ever work out in a defender's favor. And then not to mention that defender's footprints are also left around the map for a total of a minute and 30 seconds after you walk there. So Jacko doesn't even have to rush into the building. He can take his sweet time and still find your footprints. And that is why he is, without a doubt, the number one most popular ban. Now moving on to the next attacker, we have Monty. Monty is banned on a majority of maps for specific objectives because he is incredibly hard to kill or counter. In a 1v1, he should always win the fight because it's impossible to kill him. The only way you can kill him usually is if the Monty is bad and exposes his back or side. And on top of that, for bomb game mode, he can protect someone as they plant a diffuser. This means it can be incredibly difficult for any defender to hold sight just because if Monty's standing there completely blocking your bullets from hitting the person planting the diffuser, what are you going to do? You can try C4s and smoke canisters and stuff, but really that's more of a temporary delay as the attackers will just walk away and then go again. So Monty just eats up utility and completely prevents defenders from defending their own site. Not to mention, there is the more rare case, but equally as frustrating case, is when he just completely blocks a doorway and defenders can't do anything about it. They're stuck in a room. So that can be pretty frustrating. And then moving on to the last attacker, we have Blackbeard. Blackbeard sees a lot of bans, primarily in the higher ranks, I'd say in gold or platinum and above, because he can just eat a headshot. And then his presence on windows is just devastating. He can just repel on a window, peek in, eat your first headshot, and then kill you because you just can't kill him. If it were any other attacker, generally the defender would win because they could land the headshot, but Blackbeard just completely prevents that. And he's considered more of a cheese or crutch operator in the higher ranks, so a lot of people just don't like him being there. And there are a lot of Blackbeard mains because of how strong he is, so this is, can kind of be a targeted ban, which we'll talk about later. But overall, people just ban him because they want to actually kill the attacker when they hit them. Now let's move on to defenders. The number one, without a doubt, most banned defender in the game is Lesion. The reason why is because of how many traps he has and how powerful each trap is. He can have a total of 8 traps if he survives the entire round. They're half invisible, which makes it incredibly hard for you to see them unless you're keeping a keen eye out for them, or unless you drone ahead or have an IQ, but just for a normal person walking through, it's going to be very hard to notice them. And then if you are unlucky enough to walk into one, they just have so many debuffs on you. They deny any attacker from planting, you have to pull out the goo first. You can't sprint so that if you get gooed in the middle of a hallway, you're just fucked. You have to back up through the hallway while aiming down sight and hoping that the defender doesn't push you. And then also, I think this was introduced in Burnt Horizon or maybe it was Wind Bastion. Legion's goos now disrupt your view. They have this weird green filter that makes it kind of hard to see stuff. And it kind of reminds me of a yokai or Ella disruption thing where it just shakes your screen. And this wasn't the case before. And on top of that, it alerts the defenders to where you are. So if you're pushing in through a hallway trying to be sneaky and then you get gooed, they know you're there, they're going to wait for you, and then your entire flank is useless. And then lastly, to add on top of all of that, it does damage. Each goo does 10 damage, and then 4 damage per tick over time. Which, if you get gooed in the middle of a hallway, that's going to be generally at least 18 damage done to you, right off the bat. So overall, Legion is just a huge nuisance and very annoying to deal with. If you're trying to push into sight at the last second and you can't plant because you have a goo in your leg, then you're just fucked. Until they do something about that, I don't see him being banned any less. Next up, I think the second most banned defender is Mira. The reason for this is because her mirrors provide one-way vision for the defenders and it's just a huge advantage for any defending team. There are some sites that are completely set up around the Mira mirrors. And then she's even more powerful on any sites that don't have any vertical destruction. Because how are you supposed to destroy a Mira window then? You can send the Twitch drone, but generally if there's no vertical destruction, that means there's a lot of defenders on site, and they're going to be ready for the drones. So on some specific sites, she can be just absolutely devastating and make it almost impossible for attackers to push. And not to mention her mirrors also provide a way for defenders to either get pre-fire kills or prep C4s. 
Probably the most notable one is on bank basement where you set up the mirror in the red hallway and then you look into the CCTV site. You can just have a C4 prep the entire time and then as soon as someone walks in, you throw it, kill them, easy win. Now this is not to say that she's overpowered, but she is very meta changing. As soon as she's banned, then it's very hard for defenders to hold some specific sites and they have to adapt and go on to other sites. Or they have to bring in new operators to make up for her missing. And the last defender that is probably banned, I'd say either just as much as Mira or just below, is Echo. The reason why Echo is banned so much is because his drones just stop planting. Imagine as an attacker you put everything you can into pushing an objective and then you only have 10 seconds left, you have to go for the plant and then at the very last second, as you're about to stick the plant, a yokai disrupts you, stops you from planting, you lose the round. So you don't even lose the round to kills or win the round because you planted the objective, you lost the round because someone on the other side of the map, sitting on their drone, stopped you. Now obviously Echo has a decent amount of counters, IQ, Thatcher, Twitch, or bullets, explosions in general. But he is frustrating to play against, especially if it's on a site where the roof is kind of textured and it's very hard to see the yokais because they blend in so well. Echo was also recently changed in an effort to reduce his ban rate, which realistically did nothing. They lowered the duration of his disorientation. Before it used to be 10 seconds and now it's 7. But the big reason why Echo is always banned is because of the denial of plants, not the disorientation. So I can definitely see some more changes coming in the future if his ban rate doesn't lower, which it realistically will not. And before we end this segment, I did originally only plan to talk about these six operators, but I'm going to make one honorable mention for each side. These are bands that are generally seen in the lower ranks, so not necessarily gold and above, usually silver and below. But for attacking, it would probably be Blitz, and then for defending, Caviera. Now the reason why Blitz is banned so much in the lower ranks is because, well, honestly their aim isn't that good. So how do you expect them to shoot someone with a shield charging at them? Most people will just panic and shoot straight for the head, but the head is blocked by an entire shield, so they just don't do anything. So Blitz can be seen as a horrible attacker to deal with on defense just because they feel like they can't do anything against him. Not to mention he can also blind you from a decent ways away. So while he's charging at you and you're trying to aim at either his shoulders or his legs, he can flash you and then you're just basically dead. And lastly, unlike Monty, you can't turn your back to him. Because while Monty's full shield, he can't aim down sight right away and kill you. But Blitz can always kill you. So you have to constantly keep an eye on him while also keeping out for other attackers trying to push from either the sides or right behind him. And then on defense, Caviera is probably banned a decent amount in the lower ranks, at least from what I've seen on my Copper to Diamond, because a lot of people just aren't that good at situational awareness. Cav is actually really easy to deal with if you have a good team communicating and good situational awareness, as well as a good headset. Even when she's in silent step, you can generally hear her walking from a few meters away. So she's not that good at sneaking up on you. But in the lower ranks, you can basically walk behind someone for five minutes and they won't even notice you're there. And if she ever does manage to down someone and interrogate them, well, your whole team is just fucked on attack because then the defenders know exactly where you are, know who you have, and you have about 10 seconds of just sitting there doing nothing and possibly getting killed. So it makes sense why she's banned so much in the lower ranks, but in the higher ranks, she just doesn't see as much play since people are just better at dealing with her. And then generally as well in the higher ranks, if you see a cav on the enemy team, you just don't go by yourself. In the lower ranks, people don't care. They'll walk in on the opposite side of the map by themselves, get down by cav, interrogate, and then leave the match. So it definitely makes more sense in the lower ranks. But that is it for the honorable mentions and overall for the popular bands. We're going to move on to the next section. Now this next section is covering something that the community has kind of spread as a good idea, when in reality it's completely fundamentally flawed. It's that... People believe it is a smart idea to not ban an operator on the side you start. So for example, if you are on attacking first, you would not ban an attacking operator because the belief is that it inhibits your ability to play. And this kind of goes off the whole three round rotation. They say, oh, if you're going to attack for three rounds, don't ban an operator, let yourself have more variety, and you'll be up 3-0. And then all you have to do is win one more round. And if you want to hear my whole points about why the whole win one more round mentality is stupid, then go watch my rant video. I'm not going to talk about it here. But basically, this whole idea is just, like I said, fundamentally flawed. If you're completely avoiding banning someone just so that you have more options, you're also giving the enemy team more options. And then more often than not, this can actually bite you in the ass more than it can help. And then on some maps, it can be a complete coin toss as to whether it'll work out in your favor or not. For example, 
Let's run through a typical match with pick and bands and say why this would not necessarily work. The map is Oregon and your team is defending first which means you have the last band for the defender. The attackers decide to ban Legion and normally you would ban Mira in this situation because of how strong she is in Oregon. But a teammate's telling you to do no ban. So you guys listen, you do no ban. Now you guys have Mira as an operator and you can use her on every single site. You can use her on basement on the default spots, you can use her on kids room looking into bunk beds, and you can also use her on kitchen to look into dining room. These spots work for all three rounds and you're up 3-0. Now you and your team might be thinking, awesome, all we have to do is win one more round. But now you're switching sides and the other team has Mira as a defender, and they're going to use Mira the exact same way you did. They're going to win all three rounds and now it's going to be 3-3. Three to three. So this match has become completely defender-sided. Now going into overtime, you have a 50-50 chance of whether you get defense first or not. If you don't, you have essentially lost the match because the defenders were winning every single round. But if you get defense first, then theoretically you should win. But this is still, you're taking a gamble, a 50% chance just because you don't want to ban an operator. Which I don't know about you guys, but when I'm going into a match, I want better than a 50% chance of winning. Now you might be thinking, how would banning Mira make this better for you? At the end of the day, you have to remember that you're banning an operator to inhibit the enemy team, not necessarily your own. You are hoping that your team will be able to adapt and overcome any changes with an operator ban, and that you'll still win those defense sites that are much better with her. And then the goal of banning Mira is that the enemy team won't be able to adapt, that they will be so reliant on having that operator that they'll have a harder time defending the site without her. Meanwhile, you and your teammates will actually be able to defend it without her because you know what to expect. Now, obviously, this can be a lot more complicated in solo queue because you're not used to playing with these teammates. You don't know what they're going to do. You don't know how reliable they are or what strats they know. So this can be an issue in the lower ranks. And then that's why a lot of people choose the no ban option because usually when they're lower ranks, they don't want to have one of their crutch operators banned. But if your operator is getting banned and then you can't win the match, that just means the enemy team is better and they played pick and ban better than you. But in a normal team situation where you have teammates you can rely on and you're in a rank where you feel your teammates can back you up, then no ban is never an option. You don't want to give the enemy team an advantage. You want to take away from their capability to play. Choosing no ban will just shoot yourself in the foot. Ban an operator that will help them, but that your team can adapt around. Hopefully that clears up a few things on the no ban confusion. Moving on to the second last section, we're going to talk about map specific bans. I originally recorded this section over a week ago, and I'm now re-recording it because I'm going to be changing the format. Originally I was telling you the top four bans for every single map, but ultimately ended up just being me repeating the exact same bans as the popular bans. So basically Jackal, Monty, Legion, Mira, all those. I just kept repeating those over and over again. So instead, what I'm going to do is give you top two bands for each map, one attacker, one defender, but I can't give you any of the popular bands or the honorable mentions. It has to be other operators. So these will basically be off-meta bands. And in case you're saying they're being like, oh, I would really like to know what the actual top four bands are for each map, it basically boiled down to all maps Jackal was banned. For a lot of them, Monty was banned. If Monty wasn't banned, then it was Blackbeard. And then for defense, Legion was banned on every single one, and Mira was only banned on the sites where she was very useful, and then Echo was banned if Mira wasn't banned. So that's a basic summary of what it was before. But yeah, I'll give you two different bands that you can choose other than those eight. And I'll also give you a brief explanation as to why. We're going to go through these maps alphabetically, so for the first map, we're going to talk about Bank. The operator I'd say that you should ban on attack would be Thatcher, in my opinion. Mainly because so many objectives on bank rely on bandit or cades on the wall to stop people from breaching, or on hatches. So if you want to be able to defend a lot of the sites, you need to be able to make sure they don't get breached. Banning Thatcher is a good way to at least delay that, maybe stop it altogether. So that way you can hold either CEO or basement, or even teller sometimes a Thatcher ban can affect that. And then for a defender, I would say smoke. Bank is one of the few maps where smoke is incredibly, incredibly powerful on because of the super long angles he can use to throw his smoke canisters. On a lot of the sites, you can just make a hole between the sites, sit on one of them, super safe, and throw a smoke canister all the way to wherever the default plants are. So he is very good at denying plants on bank. For the next map, we're going to talk about border. 
For the attack side, I would say Gridlock could actually be a very powerful ban here, simply because I have found myself playing Gridlock a lot recently, and also when I see other people play Gridlock on border, it works incredibly well. She has the smoke utility to allow a plant without the defenders really being able to do much, and then on top of that, as she throws her tracks, since the map is fairly small, the tracks, one, cover a lot of the noise of planting the diffuser, and two, completely prevent the defenders from rotating in until it's too late. You can go for default plant on two or three different objectives without the defenders being able to push you unless they already have a line of sight on you. So banning gridlock could easily make defending a much more winnable situation. And then for defense, this one I think is going very off meta, but one that I could actually see being pretty good is banning castle. There are very, very few situations where I'd ever say banning castle is a good idea just because he's very rarely used, but there are three easy setups that you can do as castle to hold the top floor whether your team's downstairs or upstairs and it can work incredibly well. He makes extended holds incredibly easy to do because of his castle barricades. So by banning him you'd basically be stopping the defenders from doing extended holds and either going back to site or roaming without much protection. That one's very off meta. I'm not entirely sure if a lot of people will agree but that's my personal take on it. And then for chalet I would say ban maverick. Trying to hold basement with a Maverick on the attacking side is impossible. He can completely prevent you from banner tricking, and even if you're trying to Cade, it'll be very hard to hold it as they will usually have a Thatcher anyways to destroy the Electric Claw. So if you want to be able to hold Basement at all, Maverick ban is a pretty viable pick. And then for the Defender, I would say Valkyrie. She has a lot of good camera placements simply because there's so many trees outside the map that it's very hard to find them unless you're IQ. And even then, she can throw them pretty far. You're going to have to search far and wide to find them. Even if you're IQ, Valkyrie can see you looking for it and then jump out on you while you're distracted looking for cameras. So getting Valkyrie out of there is a pretty good idea. And it's not even just outside the map. Inside the map, Valkyrie can throw cameras up on the roof of Chalet where it's very hard to see and spot people across the entire top and first floor in the fireplace area. Getting her out of there makes it a lot easier for you to try to push into the top floor. Next up is Clubhouse. I would say that the attacker to ban is Maverick. He is very useful on the CCTV wall to get it open, normally because people are banner tricking it. He can also get hatches if you're in basement or get the dirt tunnel, which normally you have to use a thermite or hibana charge to get into. And then also if it ends up going to this site, you can use him on master bedroom for the same reason you would use him on CCTV to get the wall open. And since he has no counters, it makes attacking very easy on this map. So banning Maverick at least gives you a chance to win on defense, especially if you're trying to ban a trick. And moving over to defense, I'd say the operator to ban is Cade. Primarily for the same reasons that you would ban Maverick, except for reversed. Cade makes it very hard to breach in through hatches, through walls, or dirt tunnel, especially if you don't have a Thatcher or a Twitch. So getting Cade out of there lets you bring, for the most part, any breacher you want, and you don't have to worry about impenetrable walls. At least if they have a bandit or a mute, it can be fairly easy to get them off the wall or destroy their gadget. Cade is a little more tricky. Now for the next map, we're going in alphabetical order, so we're going to talk about Coastline. The number one ban I would say for attackers is Nomad, because people love to run out on Coastline. So if you're going to be on defense running out, you don't want a Nomad air jab on a window or door. It gives you more freedom to actually move around the map and not get completely forced inside. Coastline has a lot of balconies and a lot of doorways and windows underneath other doorways and windows. So running out is almost essential on this map. Banning Nomad lets you do that. And then for defense, I would say banning Valkyrie. Even though you could bring an IQ to counter her, Valkyrie cameras can be very annoying on basically any site because you can throw them into the palm trees in the courtyard or you can throw them on the palm trees on the hookah balcony. It's almost impossible to see unless you have an IQ. And banning her just gives you more freedom to choose whatever attackers you want on attack and not being forced to have an IQ with you all the time. For the next map, it's Consulate. Attacker ban, I would say, should be Thermite. I know a lot of people find it questionable when you say to ban a hard breacher, but Thermite actually makes a lot of sense. On attack, you generally want to push, if you're pushing top floor, you want to push up yellow stairs and break open the wall into a little cubby. Now if you're pushing for basement, you want to break open the garage. Thermite lets you open up the, both walls completely, so you can easily see in as an attacker. Now if you're a defender, this is really bad, because now that garage is completely open, you can easily be shot. So by banning Thermite, you're forcing them to bring Hibana, and they can only open up crouch holes or, if they want to use all three pellets, a walking hole. But it's also a much smaller target. So if you're sitting in a garage holding it, they have to run through a small target that you can easily shoot them through. As opposed to Thermite, where he just opens up the entire wall. 
And then for the defender, I would say Maestro, I think. This one was kind of hard to decide on because I really don't think there's that many influential defenders on this map. But Maestro is really strong on Garage because of his ability to hide his cameras basically underneath the truck and make it very hard for the attackers to shoot them. So if you're on attack and you're pushing into Garage, you don't want to be putting them the plant and then getting zapped 50,000 times by a turret. And even if Maestro is dead and they can't shoot you with the turret, they can still make halts on it and you can't destroy it unless you have like an Ash, Sophia, Grenade, Sledgehammer, something like that. So just banning Maestro makes you not have to worry about getting rid of the turrets. Next map we're going to talk about is Fortress, an awful map. I was actually going to skip this, but I figured some people would actually want to know. But for the attacker ban, I would say Capitao is actually a pretty versatile pick. The main reason is because a lot of people like to use him when pushing to site because Jaeger ADSs are pretty common, so Capitao is really good at smoking out site, pushing in, and planting. And since you can't counter his smoke bolts, you might as well just ban him, that way they can't push in and plant. And then his fire bolts are also incredibly useful for a lot of the sites because most of the sites have very few rotations. So you can just fireball doorways and then people just can't go through them. So if you're on defending side, you really don't want to be dealing with a Capitao. And then for the defender, I would probably say Pulse is a pretty viable pick to ban. Mainly because he can sit underneath almost every single site in C4 from below. A lot of the floor is destructible and you really don't want to be caught out on site getting detonated just because there's a pulse below you that you can't do anything about. So banning him gives you the peace of mind to at least be able to plant on site without being blown up. Next map, another bad one, Hereford Base. A pretty viable operator to ban is Nomad. Again, for the same reasons as Coastline, a lot of runouts. If you want to be running out like you should be on Hereford, you don't want a Nomad air jab stopping you. And then for Defender, this one was kind of hard to decide because normally you don't really see anyone besides Legion, Mira, or Echo being banned. But if I had to choose one, probably Valkyrie. Valkyrie can have a lot of really good camera spots because of how, I hate saying this, but grim the map looks. Since everything is kind of dark and desolate, it's very hard to see the cameras when they're thrown outside, and there's a lot of good places to throw them. Not to mention it's very easy to see majority of the top floor with one or two cameras up there. So banning Valkyrie gives you the peace of mind that you're not going to be constantly spotted every 5 seconds. Next map is Cafe. This one was a little tough to decide on because of the recent rework. But if I had to choose two, I'd say for attack, Thermite, primarily for the same reasons as Consulate. He opens up a lot of big walls instead of letting him just open up everything he wants. Make it where they have to choose Hibana or Maverick and choose very specifically where they want to open up. Because normally for Thermite, you can just go red stairs, break into piano, and then break into bar with two Thermite charges. Hibana and Maverick can't really do that. And then for defense, I would say Maestro, just because there's a v so many, so many fucking strats with Maestro now in Cafe. I don't even know all of them, but I know that there are a shit ton, especially on top floor. You open up all of the bar area, and then you just use Maestro turrets to zap everyone. So he's very strong. Next map is Oregon. These two bands are probably a little questionable by some people, but I think they're pretty common and actually somewhat useful. For the attacker, I would say Thatcher. Thatcher is so important on Oregon because he lets you easily open up the main hatch, makes it almost impossible for the defenders to stop it, and he can also help you open up the closet when pushing top floor, as well as small tower wall into dining room when pushing there. So overall, he's just a very much needed operator, but it can be worked around, so I'd recommend banning him as long as you are capable of bringing other operators that can do what he does. And then for the defenders, basically the other side of the coin, I would say banning Cade. Basement is by far the easiest site to hold because Cade can just stop anyone from breaking through the hatches. Banning Cade makes it so the hatches are fair game. Next map is Outback. This one was, again, a little difficult to decide, but I actually decided on Dokabi for the attacker ban. Primary reason is because... Outback is a very roamer-based map, and obviously since I couldn't choose Jackal, I went with the next best thing, which is Dokabi. You really don't want to be caught out roaming with a Dokabi, because the sound travels on Outback pretty far. So if you're down below in the kitchen and your phone goes off, they're going to be able to hear you in bull, party room area, because of how much the sound travels. So banning Dokabi lets you roam a lot easier on a map that is 100% roaming. And then for the defender, I went with Valkyrie, kind of for the same reason as Hereford. The cameras are just way too easy to hide on this map, especially with how tall the roof is. Just look in the like bull area or shark area. The roof goes like 10 operators high. It's super easy to hide a camera all the way up there that people will never find. And then you can just spot everyone on that floor using one camera. Next map, we're moving on to a skyscraper. For the attacker, I said Nomad, kind of for the same reasons as Coastline and Hereford. 
but even more so, Skyscraper is very, very, very run out heavy. If you're on defense, you have to run out or else you're basically throwing the game because it's very hard to kill the attackers once they're already pushing into sight. You want to be able to run out on them and kill them before they can even get to you. And Nomad completely prevents that, especially with how Skyscraper is set up. If you try to jump out a window with an air jab, you're not going to have time to get up before they can kill you because it's just all long balconies. You ban Nomad, you can then jump out and easily kill people. And then for defense, I would say Pulse, just because of how often he becomes a much needed clutch operator on either the T side site or office site. He can just roam below. Most people don't do the roam clear down there, and then you can just see for them as they go for the plant because the entire floor is destructible. That's why you always see a lot of people on the office site jumping on top of the table to plant instead of planting on the floor. So ban him to have the peace of mind of planting on site. Moving on to theme park, the attacker operator to ban is Thermite, same reason as the other maps. Basically, he opens up huge walls on site. You don't want that. If you're on defense, you want to be able to hold the site, so make them bring a Hibana or Maverick where you can just watch the one hole they can come in through. Otherwise, with Thermite, you're just not going to be able to hold the site wall as soon as it's open. And then for the defense side, I would say to ban Valkyrie. For the time being, theme park has that train room, which Ubisoft said they're going to remove in the future, but for now it has it and Valkyrie cameras are just way too strong up there. You can't see them, it's impossible. They can blend in perfectly with the green and some of them can even be out of IQ's range. So unless she's like standing right underneath the camera or very close, it's almost impossible to find them. And then for the last map, Villa, I would say Thermite is a pretty good ban on attack, kind of for the same reasons as the other maps, but also because opening up those giant walls gives you line of sight, not necessarily just to go and plant, but to give you the option to kill. A lot of the other sites, you want those big walls just so you can push in and plant. For this one, you just want to capitalize on the kills. You want to be able to open up a wall and then hide on a balcony and snipe in, as the defenders don't really have anywhere else to go. And then for defense, Pulse, this one's for the same reasons as the previous ones. Almost the entire floor is destructible. He can see for you anywhere. So ban Pulse just so you don't get c forward from below. And that is it for the map-specific bans. This next section is a little bit of a more, I guess, controversial method of banning. But it can be a valid option as I've actually seen some use in the Pro League scene. Before we get into that though, I'll describe it. It's targeted bans. As you get higher up in the ranks, you're going to start noticing a lot more players that you keep seeing every single game. And sometimes you can choose to target specific operators that they play just to inhibit the enemy team. If you've played with this one person for the last five matches and you notice that the only two operators they go are Twitch and Jaeger, and they're a good fragger on both of them, then it can be a very valid option to ban both Jaeger and Twitch, just to completely negate any possibility of them fragging out. Obviously this won't always work because some people have more than just one main, they can flex onto other people, but for the most part if you see someone going only one or two operators, it can be a pretty good idea to ban them. And the reason why I say this has seen some use in the Pro League scene is because at the Invitationals in Montreal in February, there was a pretty famous case of it where G2 target banned both Ash and Jaeger for Joystick from Empire. I, I, I do anticipate it. Uh, Dev was absolutely right when he said that one of the best maps to ban Jaeger on is Border. But yeah, I mean the Jaeger ban on Coastline was also very important. I think in general, taking out Jaeger, period, is important. Oh. As is Ash when you are worried about confronting her. Hey! There it is. There Answer it yes. Is. I mean, he's he's so good on Jaeger. Joystick is so good on Jaeger, but the vigil play on Coastline was so impressive as well. Being able to flex on other roles, man. He is an Ash Jaeger main, and they specifically targeted both those bands. It did slightly mess up their team because they also had an Ash Jaeger main on their team, but they felt banning those two operators would inhibit the enemy team more than their team. And it actually worked. It won them the match and won them the world championships. He needs to get into the site and keep in mind, in a 4v1, they are the best team that has ever played Rainbow Six. So it's something to think about. But keep in mind, this is mainly seen use on PC in the Platinum Plus ranks. And I've only really ever seen it actually go into play once or twice. I don't think this would seem much use on console because the player base on console is much larger than PC, so I'm sure you guys wouldn't run into the same people over and over and over again. But keep in mind, this also doesn't have to apply specifically just to seeing the same people over and over. Targeted bands can also be more so of a community thing. 
A lot of people have moved over to Twitch ever since Ash lost her ACOG. And because of this, a lot of people in the community are now just banning Twitch in every single game because they know that the people who go Twitch are fraggers. Not many people go Twitch just for the support. They mainly do it just for the F2. So you can target ban Twitch every single game just so that you don't have someone on the enemy team going full fragger mode. And then hopefully this would cause them to not know what to do. Like I said, go onto an operator they're not comfortable with and more than likely not perform as well, giving your team a pretty good advantage. But that's basically all I can really talk about when it comes to targeted bans. There's not much research or practice put into this. It's more of a kind of just spur of the moment type thing, but it's something to think about. That's going to be it for the information segment of the video. We're now going to move on to the quiz portion of the video. And in case you haven't watched one of these Siege School episodes before, basically how it goes is I will give you a question, put 10 seconds on the clock for you to come up with an answer, and then I'll give you my answer. If you believe that your answer is right, or at least close enough, you can give yourself a point. And at the end of the quiz, I'll give you a score telling you how well you did. Today's quiz is going to be a little short, only because for Pick and Band, there wasn't really many questions I could come up with that I didn't already discuss. So there's only going to be three questions, but let's get into it. Question one. If there's a tie between which operators you're banning, which operator gets the ban? With 10 seconds on the clock, go. Time's up. And the answer is, it's completely random. At least from what our tests have shown, there is absolutely no factor that determines which operator gets banned when it's a tie. We have checked to see if it goes with whichever operator was selected first. That doesn't happen. We've also had different people choose different bands and see if it goes with whoever has the highest ELO or something. It doesn't. So as far as we know, if there's a tie between operators, it is 100% completely random. Question 2. Doesn't matter whether you ban first or not. Just to clarify what we're talking about, I'm saying if you're the defending team and you're banning an attacker first, does that matter? Or the reverse, if you're the attacking team and you're banning a defender first, does that matter? With 10 seconds on the clock, go. Time's up. And the answer is generally no, it does not matter. Because of how popular the bands are for Jackal, Monty, Mira, Legion, Echo, all of them, it doesn't really matter who you ban because the enemy team is just going to ban another one of the popular bands generally. However, there is some power in going first. If you're looking to make an off-meta ban for one of the two sides, if you're the first ban for that side, you have a little more power than the enemy team. Let's say you are the defending team and you're banning attacker first. You really don't want to deal with Jackal, but you also want to get rid of Hibana because of hatches. So since you're first, you can make the ban on Hibana, and then that will force the enemy team to ban Jackal. Obviously, since they're attacking first, they might think, oh, we're attacking first, let's not ban Jackal, and let's just completely roam clear. But if they don't ban Jackal, then you'll have Jackal when you go on attack, and it evens out. And this applies to defense as well. If you're attacking first and you ban the first defender, you could ban someone like Cade, and that kind of forces the defenders to ban someone like Legion. So there is some power in going first in that you can force the enemy team to ban a meta operator as opposed to where you can ban an off meta operator. But generally it doesn't matter. If you're going for just popular bans, it doesn't matter whether you go first or second. Popular bans are generally going to be the top two on each side. And then the final bonus question. In what situation should you ever use a no ban? With 10 seconds on the clock, go. Time's up. And the answer is never. I just told you guys this for the no ban section. There is never a situation where you should no ban. If you said any type of situation where you said, okay, that's fine to no ban, get it through your head. No ban is not a good option. Never use no ban. And that'll conclude our short question segment of the video today. Here are your scores based on how many questions you got right. Let me know in the comments down below how many you got right, because I'm curious to see how many of you got tricked by that last question. Now before I go, I just want to remind people I am streaming every single day on Twitch. You can find me over at twitch.tv slash varsitygaming. 
And if you want to help support the channel and support videos like the Siege School, then make sure to subscribe on Twitch. You can subscribe for free if anyone you know has Amazon Prime. All you have to do is link your Twitch account and your Amazon account and you get one free sub every month. Even if you don't watch Twitch, you can still sub to help support. And if you don't have Amazon Prime, you can't opt to use $5 per month. It does go a long way to help the channel, trust me. And then the second plug, we do have merch. A lot of people keep asking me about merch and I realize that I really don't plug it enough. We have a Teespring store with a bunch of different designs. We have some Siege Chibi Operator designs as well as Siege School designs as well as Varsity Gaming designs. There's a lot of stuff over there and there's more than just t-shirts. A lot of people keep going to the store and saying, why don't you have hoodies? There are hoodies. Use the drop down menu and look at the different apparel that you can buy. So that's another good way to support the channel and get something out of it if you want some merch. I intentionally make the prices as cheap as possible so that you guys can order more if you want to. But that's it for the plugs and that's it for the video. Thank you guys for watching. Sorry about this video being delayed for like two or three weeks. I was pretty sick for the last two or three weeks and I didn't want to force myself to make the video. I'm happy it's finally done though and that you guys can enjoy and watch it. Again, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care.